There's a whole lot in this gospel that can be said. And so as I was sitting with it and thinking about it and praying and about the whole Bread of Life discourse you've been hearing from John these last few weeks, I needed a little break and so I went to where I do my best thinking in my easy chair and I turned on the television and MASH came on. And my dad really only ever let me watch TV Land when I was a kid. And so MASH was on a lot and I loved that show. And then I had this memory when I was younger, after watching MASH, I would then play and pretend that I was an army doctor. And um, so that memory just kind of came to mind. And it's always kind of fascinated me, the vivid imaginations that kids have and that we all had when we were younger and, and that kids today see in the school and playing that these imaginations that they have. And I had a, a pretty vivid one, I think that's why I wanted to go into theater uh, when I was younger, because my imagination was always running and had all kinds of different crazy, kooky, Dr. Seuss-like ideas. But um, that imagination is something that's, that's great to have. And it's something that hopefully we continue even as adults, regardless of our age, to cultivate and play with. Because our imaginations are powerful things that can do uh, and, and make us feel different ways, right? And so Jesus in the gospel, he's really challenging us to stretch our imagination. And this is something that kids are also good at because they can get their parents and grandparents and aunts and uncles and other cousins to kind of play in to their imagination and to imagine with them and to play whatever it is that you're going to play. Well, Jesus, in a similar way, is trying to do that in these passages from his Bread of Life discourse. You know, Jesus is in front of all these Jews, and he's preparing us for this meal, for the Eucharist, but he's doing it by saying that I am the bread of life. Well, he's clearly not like a loaf of Wonder Bread, right? <laughs> and so he's forcing the Jews to stretch their imagination. Because, see, the, the Jews are very focused on what's here and now. And so Jesus is up here talking about him being the bread. And they're like, what, what does that mean? And the Jews keep going back to Moses. And they're saying, no, Moses was the one who gave us bread from heaven. And we were walking in the desert. I mean, they weren't, but their ancestors were. And bread came from heaven. They were able to eat and move on. And Jesus, just a few weeks ago, we heard at the beginning of this discourse, took five loaves and two fish, and he multiplied them to feed thousands of people. So that's the stuff that the Jews want to see. They want to see the, this physical miracle. They want to be able to see him do these things so that they can believe. Because they're ready to make him like a God. They're ready to make him higher than Moses even. And Jesus is saying, no, not, not, no more of that. Like, I'm not doing any more miracles. You have to understand, I am the bread from heaven. And he says, Moses, first of all, didn't give you no bread from heaven. He was here on earth and the bread came down. How could Moses send bread from heaven? He wasn't in heaven. It came from my father. And now he's sending you bread from heaven again. Talking about his own incarnation. That he's the word made flesh. So God again is responding to the cry of his people for a Messiah. Their hunger for salvation. Just as they were hungry in the desert centuries before. And God fed them with physical bread from heaven. They're hungry again now for a savior. And God gives them the true bread from heaven, Jesus. And that, caught, that, need, that means that we have to kind of stretch that imagination and know that he's not talking about regular bread, but he is talking about his own flesh as he's preparing us for the greatest gift he'd leave us, himself in the Eucharist. And so, friends, kind of a consistent theme we're seeing in this Bread of Life discourse is Jesus doesn't want us to focus solely on what's of this world. 
Everything in this world is meant to prepare us and lead us to the world to come, to eternal life, to heaven. So it doesn't mean that the things here don't matter or that they're not important. It just means that they're temporary. This stuff really doesn't matter. All that matters is what gets us to heaven. And that's our relationships with each other and our relationship with God. How we treat one another and how we focus and build and strengthen and communicate with the Lord. That's what gets us into the next life. Not what we own or the jobs we have or our careers or whatever. As important as those things are, they don't get us to heaven. And so that's what Jesus is ultimately stretching our imaginations to understand. Because these Jews, again, it's how much money they give to the temple tax or how well they treat the priests or how often they give away their sacrificial offerings to the poor. Like these are physical things we have to be doing in order to, to meet the Son of Man, right? To see the Messiah. Jesus is saying, no, those things are important. But it's not what gets you into eternal life alone. So friends, we continue to receive that bread from heaven, his flesh for the life of the world. Let's ask ourselves, how are we using this world to prepare us for the world to come? How are we letting go of the material things that really don't matter and focusing on our relationships with each other and our relationship with the Lord that gains us eternal life. So that's what matters. That's what Jesus wants us to focus on.